All right. So to, today we're going to talk about uh, Shamgar. And uh, there's not a lot said about Shamgar. So we won't spend too much time on him. And then we'll also talk about Deborah. So these are the next two judges in the, in the history as we read through the book of Judges. And when we look at Shamgar, uh, we find that he is a rather mighty warrior. There are a number of these as we read through the Bible, especially the Old Testament, of, of certain men that really stand out as uh, impressive soldiers. And Shamgar is one of those. Even though we don't know very much about him, we know that he is a soldier that God used to help Israel. And he's called, you know, he's, he's in the list of the judges of Israel that God raised up. So the background uh, as we talk about Shamgar is that you know, after Ehud had delivered the Israelites from the Moabites. You had the fat King Eglon that he, he uh, assassinated. They had peace for 80 years. They, you know, they killed 10,000 of the Moabites, wiped out the army that, was, uh, uh, that had, had been in Israel. And then it, we find with... Um, Shamgar, that it's the Philistines who are the problem. And uh, we don't know much about that. It, it just talks about what he did in regard to the Philistines. But it, it could be that during those 80 years, the Philistines started to invade Israel. Uh, it never says they ruled Israel. So it's per perhaps during the 80 years, because when we get to Deborah, it says after the death of Ehud, uh, these things happened. So I don't know if uh, Shamgar was kind of during this 80 years of, of general peace. But anyway, we find that it, when we talk about the Philistines, we're talking about a people who have been mentioned before, even back to Abraham and Isaac and it seems like they knew something about God back then. But it seems like this is now a different people. People who've come from Kaftor, uh, which we think is Crete, the island of Crete. And uh, we know that they came from Kaftor because that's mentioned several times throughout the Old Testament. Uh, but these are going to be people who give Israel a lot of trouble for hundreds of years. And this is the first mention of uh, they're, the trouble they're giving Israel after they're in the land. So when we talk about Philistia, we're talking about this area along the, the coast, the southern uh, coast of, of uh, Israel you know, against the Mediterranean Sea. It's what today, at least part of it, is what, what is uh, called the Gaza Strip. So this war that's going on in Israel right now is basically the same territory. It's the same uh, area that's attacking Israel right now, the Gaza Strip. That was ruled by the Philistines at this time. And, uh, and they're apparently giving Israel trouble at the time of Shamgar. So in Judges 3, verse 31, this is really all it tells us about Shamgar. It says, after him, that means uh, after Ehud, was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. So this is where we get the picture of Shamgar as a rather mighty warrior. He, he killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. He didn't even have a proper weapon. He didn't have a sword or a spear. He had a tool for farming, an ox goad. You, you poke the cattle with it to get them to move uh, when they're, they're, they don't want to move. And so he uses that to actually kill not just one person, but 600 Philistines, which is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. 
Now, of course, if uh, if this was something evil that he was doing, this would be horrible. This would be mass murder, right? But this is not mass murder. This is him fighting as a representative of God against God's enemies, who are the Philistines here, and delivering Israel. So again, I don't know if the Philistines were ruling over Israel or part of Israel, uh, or if they were trying to, and he stopped that. Uh, but in some way, he delivered Israel by killing these uh, six, well, and also killed 600 Philistines. So what do we learn uh, from this very short thing? Well, we find that possibly uh, the Philistines were in charge and they had restricted the, the weapons in Israel. We know at the time of King Saul that that was the case. All right, so um, we... We see here that, that Shamgar had to use an ox goad as a weapon. So it could be that that's because uh, they had no weapons. And that's actually going to be mentioned when we get into the story of Deborah, that most of the Israelites do not have weapons. But I don't know if that's just because they don't have weapons or because of the oppression. Um, but one of the things that we can learn from it is that if God is with us, we don't have to have the best tools or what we think of as the best tools to accomplish his purpose. You know, if you just have a Bible, you don't have to have lots of special study tools that preachers like to have. You, j you can just use the Bible and that is enough. And, and you know, God's word is useful also, just like the ox goad. God's word is useful for both prodding the slow into action, like it's actually intended for with the uh, the ox, but also it's it's useful for destroying the enemies of God, whether that's the false ideas that are torn down, and of course, eventually God Himself through His word will destroy uh, the the people that are standing against Him. All right. But let, let's take a moment then to talk about uh, Deborah. And Deborah is a wise woman. She is not a military leader like almost all of the other uh, judges, although not all of them are military leaders, at least not, not very much. And Deborah is not at all. But in Judges chapter 4, in verses 1 through 9, it says, When Ehud was dead... The children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Heresheth Hagim. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded? Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor. Take with you ten thousand men of the sons of Naphtali and of the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will, tell Sis will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. All right, so when we look at this, um, I don't know exactly where all of these places are, but this is a, a decent guess based on what others have, have researched. Uh, so Deborah's palm tree was between Bethel and Ramah. I don't know exactly if this is where Ramah was. We hear about Ramah as the hometown for Samuel later on as well. Um, but 
uh, Kadesh was way up north. So Barak was very far north from where Deborah was. So he comes all the way down to her down there. And then they go back up uh, to uh, about halfway up to Mount Tabor. We don't know exactly which mountain is Mount Tabor, but we know where the Kishon River is. And, and so that's where they have the battle. All right, so uh, that's in the area of Zebulun and, uh, and Naphtali. And so when we see how the battle goes, as we keep reading, we find that Sisera hears Barak has gone to Mount Tabor, so he gets together his army, including 900 iron chariots. So this is a very scary army, very strong. And so Barak came down from the mountain with his 10,000 men, and with God's help, Barak and Israel killed the entire army of Sisera, wiped them out completely. Sisera ran away on foot, and he found the tent of Heber the Kenite. Now, the Kenites were relatives of Moses through his father-in-law, and they had traveled with Israel when they came out of Egypt. And so they were living there around them, but they weren't really Israelites. Uh, but Jael, the wife of Heber was there. And she invited Sisera into the tent, said she would hide him there. And then she gave him milk to drink, covered him up, and he went to sleep. And then if you know, if you've read this story before, the next thing was, after he was asleep, she took a tent peg and a hammer and knocked it through the temple of his head. So right through his head into the ground and killed him. Um, which sounds awful, and yet this is something that she did on behalf of Israel, on behalf of God, really, in defending God's people. And so in Judges 5, there's a song of praise that uh, Barak and Deborah sing. They mention Shamgar, the, you know, the days of Shamgar and the days of Jael. So they mention them as being the ones who delivered Israel. Now, Jael is not the judge, Deborah is. But in this case, it's a woman who is praised for delivering Israel. Uh, and as far as Deborah mentions herself, she calls herself a mother in Israel. She's not a military leader. But it also mentions that there's a lack of weapons in Israel. Very few people had, had a, a, a proper weapon. And apparently, it seems like in the way they word it, that this is partly because they were following other gods. This is kind of a, a punishment. But now they are turning back to God. And so even with the lack of weapons, God gave them victory. They wiped out the uh, other army, a very strong army. And so the volunteers that went and fought, they were praised in this song. And Barak was praised they talk about the tribes that helped, Ephraim, Benjamin, Zebulun, and Issachar. And it looks like there were some from Reuben that helped and that they had to really think about it uh, before they joined in. And then Gilead, Dan, and Asher are mentioned as staying in their safe places, not joining in. And then Miraz is cursed specifically for not helping them. Um, God wanted, wanted these people to join in and help. And so, but Jael is praised. There's a, a long section of talking about what she did in killing Sisera. And then they talk about Sisera's mother wondering why he's taking so long to come home and thinking, well, they're just dividing the spoil. Uh, and yet, of course, Sisera was never going to come home. So then the land had rest for 40 years after this. Uh, so we find that God delivered Israel here, but for them to be delivered, they really had to trust him and go fight a much stronger army. Uh, but God gave them complete victory, completely destroyed their enemy. So they had to trust him and do the work, go out and, and fight, but God is the one who gave them victory. And Jael, who is a woman, is given the biggest credit for the victory, even though she's not even an Israelite. Uh, you know, God can use anybody to accomplish his purpose. 
And we don't need to, to think that God has to do something in a specific way. He can do it however he chooses. And we need to see the value in every volunteer, just like they praise them in the song. Notice that, that when we refuse to participate in God's work, we're cursed for it. It's not good for us to not participate. Let's be blessed by being part of God's work. That's, that's something we see in that song, that those that participated were blessed for it. And it was a good thing to be part of this great accomplishment that God did through them. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's the class for tonight. Uh, so thank you very much.